Vinny Mitchell, thanks for talking to Frank Rowan, Dot TV. Now, I know the fight ended early, so there's not a lot to analyse, but I tell you what, what you could notice straight away was that snappy jab. First time I've seen it from you. Uh... Well, I've been watching a lot of more, a lot of more boxing videos, Manny Pacquiao, Marquez, and practicing on their sort of styles. Family jab, been working with, it, with Paul in the gym. Um, I've actually had a lot of sparring with Rocky Dane, who's helping me build with Marsh tonight. So that's helped me. I've had a lot, a lot of six rounders with him, and it's helped me bring my pace down a bit and just slow things up and work on new shots with him. So it's all coming together. Must have been tempting though, because when you did have him down, you know, maybe the old Vinnie Mitchell would have rushed in there and tried to finish it off and throw those body shots, but no, you sat back and you took your time again. I mean, the experience is showing now. Yeah, all well, the old Vinnie Mitchell, look what happens. I go rushing in, I get caught early, which most fighters do. They, get, they go rushing in, they get caught early in the first round, you go over. I think you've just got to learn from it. It's just, it's, it's, my, first, it's my, my seventh fight now, and I'm just slowly learning. It's, it's taking its time, but it will come back, as I think it is. At the end of the fight, what was your man Paul Cook saying to you? Because he said something to you and he didn't look too happy about something. Oh, I, was, I was sort of catching him, and when I was sort of driving my shots through, he was going, but I just sort of wanted to do a bit more. I wanted to go out, well, I think I'm so fit in my body, my body's saying, you want to do more, you want to do more. Whereas an early victory, I don't get paid for overtime. I've done my job early, and I think that's a good job. So. Tell me about the incentive you had. <laughs> oh. What incentive was that, Paul? Well, we said to him, if there's anything wrong, Frank, give a Ooh. wave, mate. Where's he gone? There he is. Let's look at those little hairs that they said they're going to pull if you come back to the call and you don't do I'm getting them. But listen, what's a great fight. Is it sitting now for you Christmas? When do we see you again? Well, I'm ready. Whenever I get the call to go, I'm ready to go. So I'm going to keep in the gym now. Um, well, I was hoping to get on the sixth in three weeks, mm. but looks a bit we, we're not going to be there. But hopefully, I can. If not, after Christmas, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Just stay there, mate. Let's bring in your brother, uh, Kevin Mitchell. Uh, we know the two of you have uh, <laughs> great boxing family there from uh, East London. Kevin, how have you been? Because you've been out for a while. And we know that you hurt your hand. First of all, how's that? I've been good. Yeah, my hand's getting better. Um, there's a few things still a little bit wrong, but a little bit of swelling there still. So, but the actual operation itself has got. A lot better. The operation's gone to a, gone to plan. It's so I'm turning back into my knuckle. I've been back in training for like two weeks now. But the time I've had, I've just been like, I had a nice break with me and that. Obviously, I've not been doing much. I've been working a lot with kids in schools and stuff and got boxing, boxing into schools. So it's just, I've been, I've been all right, keeping busy. And now I'm back into the gym. I don't ask you about your schools work at the moment, but before we get there, just a word on how your brother did tonight, Vinny. It's the best I've seen him. Powerful, strong, used his brain. He didn't go in, throw him like a madman because he knew he had him hurt. And I thought, well, the first shot, that, that really done, that's, what, that's where the pain was. I think he threw a big right hook and he caught him, he walked straight onto it. And it, yeah, I, I see him get up and I see his legs twinge a little bit and I thought, that's finished, that's him done. And he didn't go in and go like a madman after that. He took his time and relaxed and like I, said, I, got thought a job done. I thought it was a jab. As soon as he came out, stiff jab, sharp, took his head off the game. Has it been a lot more quieter around the gym now that he's had a few weeks off? Uh, yeah, it has, because you know he's got a big mouth, you can tell when he's talking. But no, as it's, it's good to have him in the gym and with all the other boys, but like now when I fight, like, I get a week's break, he goes a bit up. quiet, but he does liven things up. I liven things all that up, you know. Only because Paul can't, when I put him over, you see. Well, just finally, Kevin, a, a, a word on the great work you're doing in schools, it's bringing non-contact boxing into schools. First of all, you know, how did you come about the idea? Well, my teacher, Mr Gray, from my old school, um, he, he said to me ages ago, why don't you do the boxing in schools? I said, well, let's try and start it up. I said... Yes, yeah, but the time is you not. I'm like, so one minute I'm here and the next minute I don't see you for a few months. I'm getting ready for fights and that. I said, I'll do it. I said, but I need someone to be able to help me do it. And my mate Dean, who's was, was working, was working at the time for UPS, he said, well, how about we start trying it together then? But if we get enough work on that cover me wages, I'll do it. I'll make sure I'm there every, every, every school. And it's took off now. We, we do 250 schools, 250 kids we work with a, a week. So it's took quite often. I think the time our Christmas comes, we're looking on having about looking on 20, 20 odd schools or more. Mitchell Brothers, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Cheers, thank you very much.